YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bob Comka, Senior Instructor on the Lens Slide at the Rogue Warriors Training Compound. And today we're going to be going over how to do uh, combative concepts, past, present, and future. And we're going to cap off the series with uh, the combative concepts, uh, ver uh, variations, and uh, um, mentality towards using the Kaitanage technique principle found in uh, traditional and Tenshi Aikido that you saw in the previous videos. So sit back, relax, and uh, we'll be right with you in a sec. As mentioned before, we're going over past, present, and future, and we're capping off this series with Kaitanage. In the previous two videos, uh, Len Sly went over uh, uh, traditional Kaitanage and uh, various forms of Tenshin Aikido. I'm going to chip in and go through uh, uh, applications and uh, mentality towards using the Kaitanage technique and principles in more uh, you know, practical or, or uh, maybe, you know, for lack of a better word, street fighting application kind of thing, you know, personal defense. With me today is Rod, as usual, our, our, uh, our trusty uh, break fall master. <laughs> and I just want to hit a couple points before my Kaita Nage is basically using techniques that utilize this um, attacking the rotary joint in the shoulder. So rotating the shoulder over to assist with uh, taking the opponent down or um, throwing them or what have you. And you can attack it in various ways. You can use the wrist as you rotate this. You can also catch the elbow and use the elbow to manipulate the shoulder to rotate in a way it's not supposed to go, as you've seen in, in several uh, Tenchi Aikido techniques. And now we're just gonna mix in a little bit more cut down version. Um, in my opinion, the, one of the biggest differences is making a traditional, a classical, or any other kind of martial art street applicable, is basically you have to involve all the concepts of the art or the system that you're doing. So it's not just uh, walking through the movement or waiting for that perfect opportunity to be attacked, but you have to be able to utilize you know, your, your awareness, your timing, your distance, your balance, your striking, um, and then finally the technique should be last. So you, you need to master the core principles and then the actual techniques that manifest in that situation, those, those options will present themselves to you you know, as you apply your combat strategy. So for now, we're just gonna go for a uh, punch to the face, basically, right? Punch to the face, right, boom. So not so much your martial art punch, but remember, punching, boom, re you know, punch, relax, punch, retract kind of mentality. But main principles incorporate your hand deflection. So you're, in your stance, you don't want trouble, guy throws off, deflect right away, catch here, and then as you move, Rather than throwing them across the room, you want to think throwing them right down at your feet. So as you tank on, you get them right at your feet. And then depending on how they fall, if you feel like you're going to get tangled up, this is easy. You got your shin against the back of their neck, and you can easily adjust your footwork and take out this elbow. You have a nice standing pin. You can break this if you need to. You can kneel down, and you're also in a perfect position to deliver more strikes. You know, mentality of using a gun, you, you shoot until the threat stops, same with empty hand, you strike, apply, technique, break, and crush until the threat stops, okay? Be wary of the situation and how much you have to escalate, of course, but know your options, know how much you can escalate, and all that kind of stuff, okay? So, one more time, so punch the face, here, <laughs> From here, you got the arm wrapped up, that's okay. You still have control of the head. Uh, you can crush that, strike, then break, or you can roll them over. 
Remember, ukes and nages, be careful. You know, make sure you feel the technique and go with the power of the technique for training. But in actuality, you're probably gonna bust all this up, you know, over torque this and things like that. Remember, you're stopping the threat, okay? So one more time. One, catch this, extend. Don't just pick up your leg and step into his face, but just extend as you throw them over. And then from here, you can, you can, you can snap this real easily. Striking, you have to strike there, however you see fit. And of course, you got your head stomp if you need it. Okay, one more time, come here. Okay. Boom, here, and throw. You can hold on to their head and, and secure the base of their skull, and as they're right in front of you, compress, strike, you know, whatever you need. You know, pinch. Always having the upper hand, upper, you know, higher ground, if you will. Okay, uh, next variation, we're gonna manipulate the elbow to attack the rotating shoulder joint. Okay, so punch, uh, that thing please. Okay, here, catch. This can either be catching his head near the base of the skull, or it could be a strike. You wanna affect his head and his vision. So either strike, strike, or catch. And as you manipulate this, Right away, smash their face with a knee as you hook their elbow, and then keep rotating until you take them down. And if you still control their neck, you can dig in as you keep this secure. If you need, slide up for a standing pin, and no need to go to the ground or anything like that. Okay? So, even with the more violent street applications, you can use like the most basic of techniques. You know, standing pins that come from Tenshin Aikido. You know, connection and understanding of uh, you know, the moving threat up until contact that you can sometimes get from uh, traditional training. Okay, so one more time. So, to flex, strike, always control. Don't give them a chance to pull back or continue the attack or whatever. Right away, strike after strike. Control all the way down. You know, for your law enforcement officers, you can easily fold them up and get into cuffing techniques or cuffing positions and things like that with using medium to minimal damage on your suspect, depending on how unruly they get. Okay, one more time. So deflect, strike right away, knee, bring them down, always controlling. Okay, controlling the head, controlling the shoulder, controlling the shoulder with the elbow. If you need to, you can easily Overwhelm, you can scan the area, draw weapons. If he was trying to mug you, mug him back, take his wallet, yeah. and then break his fingers. You know, stuff like that. Make him get to do ATM card, okay? And one more variation. <clears throat> so, how likely is it somebody to walk up to you and just like kick you or stomp kick you? Who knows, who cares? It's a good tool to work with. You know, you get to work with feet coming at you. So he comes up with a stomp kick, stomach, stomach, Right? Stomach, right? We don't want that to happen. We can, remember, basics. Utilize our angles and our hand deflections. Okay, so here, you see it right away. Take away that kick. He has that lunging step because you took away the balance of landing from the kick. And right away, you can strike, hook this elbow, and then slip right in for a nice uh, neck cranking choke. Now, granted, he has a free hand. This is open, but if you move in smoothly, with you know that, that Ike feeling, but in a violent way, you cinch this nice and fast, they're probably gonna be not worrying about what openings you have, they're gonna be worrying about the opening in their neck that's being uh, shut off, which is their arteries and trachea. So right away, you, you do this until they tap out, you do it until they get dizzy and pass out, whatever, and then from here, you can let go, use a little leg sweep, and depending on how they end up, you keep yourself safe with movement. Then you can deliver whatever finishing moves you want. Okay, one more time. So remember, watch the angle. Legs are longer than arms, so you don't want to be too close. Go ahead and try to get this. Okay, watch your angles. A little bit of fade. 
just a little fade. That 45-ish degree angle, just to get off the line of the kick. Let me use your hand reflection to assist. Okay. And then you use that chitin movement to manipulate the elbow and the shoulder as you deliver uh, asphyxiating type of technique. So one more time. So one, three. Finish them off as you see fit. Okay? Remember, the, the main principle you see, obviously, always hand deflections, distance bounds, timing and space, all that stuff. But the Kaikinade principle, whether it's traditional, Tenshin style Aikido, or any other style of Aikido, and then the way we incorporate into a potential real life situation that you can use to uh, save yourself or save someone else, you're attacking the rotation of the shoulder. So it's a ball joint. It, you know, it can only go so far, relax, circle, it can only go so far, and so we're using this principle to keep them off balance or throw them, or use the elbow to apply rotational torque on the shoulder from the elbow, okay? Thank you very much, Rod, good job, and you more beer. <laughs> so that's it for uh, this uh, um, rendition of uh, past, present, and future with the, the third part of uh, using a combative concepts approach with the uh, Aikido technique Kaitenage and its concepts and principles. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like buttons, leave comments, ask questions, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.